All right, and we back on the forecast. Now, we as a group have to remember that we cannot rely on our enemy. I know a lot of people want to be a part of the system, but the system was designed to destroy us. We have to start building our own systems to help each other. And we can't get confused like we've never done anything like that before. Because when there was no illusion of inclusion, when we didn't have any other choice, our people did what we had to do. It's only in recent history has the illusion of inclusion affected us so much that we don't think that we are enough for each other. But imagine how we spend all of that time fighting for America How we use that time fighting for ourselves, the things that we could have been. But still, as a group, we have to put our cape on for everybody else except for ourselves because that's when it becomes illegal to put our capes on, right? During this election, we have to put our cape on so no other group is targeted. But then when the spotlight is back on us, well, now we're comfortable enough not to do something. But we have to be one of the only groups that fought our enemy to allow us to fight to defend our enemy. We fought them to join their army, to join their wars, to defend them, only to come back to face the same issues that we've always faced. But if you want to go that way, at least take the mindset of the black soldiers like from the Houston riot of 1917. During the Camp Logan mutiny or the Houston riot of 1917, The black soldiers came together to protect the community from the racist police department. When the Houston police started harassing random members in the black community, the black soldiers had had enough and they unified and they went around shooting at, killing, doing whatever they had to do. And in just one night, they ended up killing 16 people, including five policemen. And then when it was time to snitch on each other, They didn't say a word. It didn't matter if they thought they were innocent on trial or what. Some people who were involved weren't punished. Some people who wasn't involved was punished. But still, nobody said a word because they had unity. They stood up for the black community and did what they had to do. So if we're going to fight and be a part of somebody else's army, we might as well use it for our own good. Because at the end of the day, it's still going to come back to hurt us. In San Antonio, a black military vet, Damian Daniels, ended up getting shot and killed by the police. Now, let's go back and see what happened to this brother. We begin tonight with the unexpected death of Damian Daniels. New at 10, a vigil was held tonight in honor of Damian Daniels, his death sparking outrage and calls for change in the way law enforcement responds to mental health calls. For the first time, we are hearing from the Daniels family. Eyewitness News reporter Henry Ramos with their fight to protect those who served. My brothers never lost a battle until now. Combat veteran Damian Daniels served and survived two tours in Afghanistan. Now the 30 year old is dead. He lost his life at his own home in San Antonio. I'm hurt. Damian was shot and killed by a Bear County Sheriff's deputy. His older brother Brendan says his brother should still be here. This is a situation that could have been avoided. When deputies got the call to Damien's home, they say he was experiencing a mental health crisis. Sheriff Javier Salazar says deputies talked with Damien for 30 minutes. At one point, he says the combat veteran grabbed a deputy's taser and didn't comply with deputies' orders. Damien had a gun in his holster on his hip. He was shot twice and killed. Damien Daniel! His death has sparked protest and has raised concerns about mental health and law enforcement. I believe law enforcement should not respond to to calls like this. The family demands for reform within the sheriff's office and says more mental health resources are needed. Once they realize that a person is in a state of mental health, I believe the proper mental health professionals should be contacted. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says there are 16 staff members at BCSO trained in mental health. I thought that mental health professionals should have been sent out there. He was living his best life and unfortunately was cut off. The civil rights attorney for the Daniels family is asking for an outside investigation. There's no way that the sheriff's office should be investigating themselves. Henry joins us live outside the sheriff's office. Henry, why didn't BCSO send one of those 16 trained mental health deputies? 
Aaron, when asked that question, the sheriff says that is not their protocol. Deputies on patrol were dispatched. He also said the deputies that were there did not have time to call up the deputies in the mental health unit. The sheriff also says he believes that the deputies in that unit wouldn't have done anything differently. Meanwhile, the Daniels family, they're calling on Sheriff Salazar to step down. They also hope the district attorney will present the case to a grand jury. As you can see and you look around, you can see the, the, the flags posted up. Uh, and it just shows the, the tremendous support that San Antonio is showing. It's been called a silent war. Military veterans struggling with mental health issues. Tonight, the family of Damian Daniels talks about what's next after the military veteran was shot and killed by Bear County Sheriff's deputies. On the same day that vigil was held for Daniels, the names of the deputies involved in the case were released. They are 52-year-old John A. Rodriguez, 49-year-old Enrique A. Cepeda, and 40-year-old Michelle Garifa. Rodriguez is a 14-year veteran with the Sheriff's Office. Cepeda served, served 23 years, and Garifa has 16 years with the department. The night of the shooting, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar praised his deputies and their response. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the investigation into the shooting is ongoing. Tonight, Damian Daniels remembered with candles and concerns for those like him. Say his name! Damian Daniels! Say his name! Damian Daniels! A time for remembrance and a time to call for change. I understand exactly what Damian was going through. So, personally, I feel that there's more that we could have done. Stephen Clarence has a tie to Damian Daniels. Both stepped up to serve their country. But Clarence also admitted to facing mental health issues in his past. So many veterans have PTSD and come home from combat or from military service period with mental health issues. Daniels was shot and killed by law enforcement after deputies responded to a mental health call at his home last week. I let them know my brother was going through a severe stage of paranoia that he had a weapon, that he is a military veteran. Deputies were made aware of a weapon and a struggle ensued before shots were fired. When I heard that he'd been killed, it, 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 it just tore me up. I couldn't believe it. Vietnam veteran Charles Urbina Jones also attended tonight's vigil. He fought in Afghanistan. He came home, was killed in his front yard, not by a terrorist or by Al Qaeda, but he was killed by a law enforcement official. That just blows my mind. He says something must change, calling on people to form committees and speak with politicians. This does not need to happen ever again. This is military city. And today at the Daily Briefing, Judge Nelson Wolf spoke about the shooting death of Daniels. He says the staff with the Center for Healthcare Services should have handled this case. Uh, this is a welfare call. It was not the guy hadn't committed a crime. Um, he uh, he was in his home. He did have a gun on him, which he had every right to have a gun on him. But this should have never happened. Now, I never understood why we were so quick to join somebody else's army, especially our army meant to keep us in our place in the first place, meant to spread, quote unquote, manifest destiny for your enemy. And even when we do join the military, they don't even help their own veterans. So why would we expect them to help us? But this brother, Damian Daniels, had a mental health history and was a 100% disabled war veteran. And the police were well aware of his mental health issues. And the fact that this brother didn't have any criminal record. And just the day before he was killed, the police went to his home and diagnosed him for paranoia. They went to his house and saw his brother in the front yard, and clearly he was having mental health issues. And he told the police that he was hearing voices in his house, and he thought his house was haunted. But then the next day, his mom had to call the police again, trying to get him some help. But when they got there, this brother didn't want to leave with them. Now, I'm pretty sure that his mom called for a mental health specialist. And didn't think that he would end up getting murdered because they had just called the day before and they had called previously. But this is the very reason why we have to build our own institutions. We can't expect our enemies to come with any kind of sympathy for us, with any kind of help for us. 
And even if we did have our own and something happened, we would be in charge of our own punishment system so that we could get actual justice for both sides. But as long as you expect your enemy to come and help you and then they do what they want and then we expect them to get justice from themselves, then we're going to be banging our head against the wall. But when the police got there, they saw he had a bulge under his shirt because he legally had his gun. So when he refused to leave, somehow they ended up getting into a struggle. Now they tried to tase him, but they claimed that the taser didn't work. But when they got into a struggle, and even though this brother didn't have a criminal background, let alone a history of murdering, except for when it's sanctioned by the United States of America, because apparently when America sanctions killing, then it's okay. But other than that, this brother didn't have a history. But the police said during the struggle, it was apparent what he was going to do with the gun. Now, witnesses say he didn't pull his gun and he had his hands up when they shot him at the time he was shot. But one of the cops, John Rodriguez, claimed he had no other choice but to shoot this brother. Forced to shoot. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says one of his deputies had no choice but to shoot a man after he became erratic and violent during a mental health call. That man, 31-year-old Damian Daniels, died outside of his far west side home yesterday. Devin Clark now with how that shooting unfolded for deputies and neighbors. A mental health call to a home on Liberty Field took a deadly turn last night. Tons of cop cars and an ambulance and a fire truck. Going to give you all an update. On Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says deputies had been to the house for 31-year-old Damian Lamar Daniels several times over the past few days. Reports were that he was suicidal, that he was despondent over the loss of several family members. Uh, very recently, there was also some indicators that he may have been seeing things and, and hearing voices. Last night, attempts to calm down and help a reportedly erratic Daniels didn't work, despite numerous efforts by first responders who witnesses say filled the block. And we were leaving for a meeting at 7. We walked out of our house at 7. They had already closed off the streets and they weren't allowing anyone to leave or come down the streets. Trying to convince him to get help. Salazar says even though a deputy tried to bond with Daniels, he became aggressive and grabbed a deputy stun gun. After failing to be subdued by another deputy stun gun, Salazar says Daniels reached for a gun he had in his own waistband. After refusing to drop it, Salazar says a deputy shot Daniels twice in the torso to Tonight, some neighbors are trying to forget what they saw. Looked like a body under a sheet. And then once more cars came, then it just like blocked the view. And this evening, there is still debris and remnants of blood outside of Daniel's home. And we know that two veteran deputies and a trainee deputy will be placed on administrative leave and then administrative duty as two separate investigations continue. A quote, we are heartened by his commitment for getting justice for Damien, end quote. That is what the attorney for Damien Daniels, who was shot and killed by sheriff's deputies a week ago today, is saying following a meeting with the district attorney. But Paul Venema with what the Na National Civil Rights Lawyer and the district attorney are saying. Last week, 31-year-old Damien Daniels, a 100% disabled Army combat veteran, was shot and killed by sheriff's deputies outside his northwest Bear County home. The sheriff said that the shooting was preceded by a struggle as deputies answered a call for a mental health check. Those officers were called out by the family of Damien uh, Daniels to get him help. A great job would have been to get him help not to kill him. Standing alongside Daniel's mother and brothers, Merritt said reports that Daniel's was suicidal were inaccurate. He was not by any means suicidal. Uh, he was under, uh, he, he was suffering a mental health crisis. Uh, he was paranoid and he needed help. District Attorney Joel Gonzalez issued this statement concerning the Daniels case. It said, in part, mental health is a crisis that needs to be addressed by people outside the criminal justice system. Gonzalez called the meeting the beginning of a dialogue. The statement continued, we hope to be able to provide answers to the family of Mr. Daniels once we have received and reviewed this shooting and presented it to a grand jury. Merritt is asking for the release of the deputy's body cam video and the release of the names of the deputies. Now, I know a lot of us want to believe in this black and brown connection and always unify with other groups when history has shown this other groups 
don't have the same kind of allegiance to us. Everybody connected with this case from the cops who shot him to the DA protecting him was of Hispanic descent. But you still get the same results. Because at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we are all we got. But now to justify shooting his brother, the police claim that he was suicidal, but that wasn't true at all. Even the reports by the police said he told them he wasn't suicidal when they asked him. But even if he was suicidal, it is not the police job to go around killing people who are suicidal. And then justify his murder by claiming they were trying to help him. Tonight, protesters descended on the Bear County Sheriff's Office. They want justice for the veteran who was shot and killed by a deputy this week. Damien Lamar Daniels was experiencing a mental health crisis at his home in far west Bear County. According to BCSO, he got into a struggle with deputies. Now the county judge wants changes to how mental health crises are handled. And the sheriff is proposing a plan. Eyewitness News reporter Sue Kalberg explains. For a second night, demonstrators came to the Bear County Sheriff's Office to demand justice for Damian Lamar Daniels, who was killed by deputies when his family called to ask for mental health help. It seems they have a powerful ally in County Judge Nelson Wolf, who tonight said Daniels shouldn't be dead now. Something's wrong in how we handle that. So I've asked for uh, our independent review by our mental health department and to also come back with other recommendations how we might handle this, uh, cases like this. Uh, I, I, uh, I think there's got to be room for improvement. Sheriff Javier Salazar responded by saying the three deputies involved did their best when faced with a deadly decision. I'm a big fan of, of, of using the right tool for the right, the right job. So I do believe that law enforcement is overused. Salazar says he wants to start a pilot program that would have mental health specialists not just deputies, dealing with those in crisis. Both men agree it's budget season and they'll be talking about how to plan and pay for effective change, maybe even moving mental health services out of the sheriff's office. We are, if we do the funding, we're going to do it through the mental health department. The whole thing doesn't set well with me. Um, the sheriff also said he'd welcome a chance to meet with Daniel's family Daniel's mother tells us they're still arriving in town and dealing with arrangements. Damian Daniels was a military veteran shot and killed by a Bear County Sheriff's deputy just a week ago. Now his family gathering outside the Justice Center. Daniel's family meeting with the District Attorney Joe Gonzalez as questions remain about why Daniels was killed during a mental health check outside of his far west side home. Dylan Collier live in downtown with what we have learned about this meeting. Dylan. And Ursula, flanked by prominent civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, the family of Damian Daniels walked into the Justice Center just after 10 a.m. The meeting appeared to last about 90 minutes. The shooting death of the 31-year-old Daniels has reignited calls to change how the sheriff's office and law enforcement in Bear County in general handle mental health calls. Daniels, who was armed and going through a mental health episode, was shot and killed by a deputy after struggling with several deputies outside his home. We learned today his family first called the American Red Cross because of this very concern that a response by law enforcement was not the right way to handle it. The family also claiming Daniels was not suicidal and that this was his first mental health episode. Merritt says the family takes issue with the sheriff's assertion that the deputies responded appropriately. Merritt also confirming that BCSO officials reached out to the Daniels family after Daniels was killed and the family declined to meet with them. Merritt has also asked for the name of the deputy who shot and killed Daniels to be released along with the full body camera footage. Now, of course, they're going to justify shooting this military veteran, even though he wasn't the one with the criminal background and they knew about his mental health history. But they will not talk about the history of the cops that were involved. The cop who fired the fatal shot, John Rodriguez, had already killed another mentally ill person before. And they let him off with that murder, too. And this is the second mentally ill person that he has killed. The other cop, Michelle Garcia, had just went to patrol less than a week. And she was being investigated for fraternizing with inmates in her career. But they don't go and talk about the murderer's history. They talk about the person who was killed history in order to justify our deaths. Even if you're a military veteran who served their country. 
And now, instead of talking about somebody paying for this crime or going to jail or serving some kind of punishment, they're talking about adding more mental health services, possibly, if it's in their budget. But at the same time, this is something that we have to create on our own. We cannot call the police to come and help us and expect it to be okay. That's why when we have domestic issues, we need to form our own groups that we can call. Because far too often, when we call our enemy to come resolve our issues, we end up with more problems than we had in the first place. That's why it's time for us to start resolving our own issues. And when they realize we're starting to do that and we're not depending on them to save us, that's when your enemy will start getting worried. But as long as they know that you'll fight for their election, and now that you feel like you've got your candidate in, even though you've never asked for anything, are you going to continue to protest when these situations keep happening? Are you going to continue to be mad? Because at the end of the day, we are still in that system, no matter who is president. They still control everything about this society. It's time for us to start building our own societies and doing what we have to do. Because as long as we're in somebody else's system, hoping for justice from somebody else, then we're going to continue to get the same results over and over. What's your name? What's your name? Your badge number? Ramos, 2946. What's your name? Your badge number? Spindola, 2559. Okay. I'm getting kicked out of Walmart for shopping. Walgreens for shopping. I'm just buying my stuff. And they say that I was stealing next door. I fit the description. We're in a black jacket. Afro. I'm a veteran. I'm not even from around here. I'm in West Covina, California. Okay. And these people say I'm stealing. Not these people, Vons. Who? Vons. So Jordan, you said Jordan. they're kicking me out. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't want you in here, either. So they don't want me here, or no. they don't want me here. Both. Both. Who are they? They don't want me here. Walgreens and Vons. Who, who in Walgreens? Their manager here. No. What's the name of the manager? You can, you can have their name when we go outside. Could, yeah, I could get their name I'll, and I'll their, their phone number for you. Okay. What was your first name, boss? Are you the manager that said that that I can't be here, or are you the manager? Are you the manager that said I can't be here? I had a customer come in who said they witnessed you. Stealing and being kicked out of Vons? Me. I was stealing and kicked out of Vons. I've never been in this area. It's the first time I've been in this Walgreens. And she's kicking me out and I was shopping. Did I physically kick you out? Yes. They're saying I cannot okay. shop here. I can't Did shop here. Why? Why can I shop here? This is the shit that happens every day. We had happens every day. Stores. Bullshit. I'm coming to shopping. Yo, you can't park here. Why? Because I was stealing and I wouldn't even go there. That has nothing to do with me. I'm shopping. I just went to get some damn shampoo and shit for my hair. That's it. You got your answers there, man. I got a report. I had to follow up on it. It's my job as a manager of this building. So, when you, let me ask a question. If, you see, if a customer comes in here and, a, and somebody comes here and says she's stealing, are you going to kick her out too? It just just off because a customer says it. The police can come and just kick you out because a customer, customer says it. Did any employee here yes. witness me steal? Not here, next door. There's someone in Bonds next door yes. that witnessed me steal. Yes. They said a person with a black jacket. What did they say? How, how, describe red it. Hat. A red hat. Someone with a red hat at Vons. I'm going to Vons. Can I go to Vons? You guys want to come with me? Did you say? Did you say someone was in here stealing? Yeah. And who was the person that was stealing? Did you see the person stealing? Yes. They're saying that it was me. No, and they it's just not me out of the store. They said a person with a red hat. No. It's not a person red with a red shirt. hat. Red shirt. They if said you're it was a red hat. Taking me, get out. Okay. Get out. The police are out here. That's not him. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, what Walgreens is telling us, because we got two posts. So the first one was Vaughn's and the Walgreens. Walgreens pointed him out. No, he told didn't. Us. So if he's unrelated, then I oh, should get to go. There's nothing. The one that stole from us is a red t shirt, flannel camouflage, black and gray pants. Okay. And the other one was Vaughn's. Okay. All right. And he had a ponytail. You don't have a ponytail. <laughs> okay. Can we go? I'm gonna go back over there and talk to her, and I need to get her name and all her information yeah, because you, you see the mix up right there. No, said a red no, hat. No. How do you get a red hat mixed with a red shirt? Next thing you know, I'm banned. No. Because of she, because she said allegedly somebody. You know what I mean? And y'all just I come and just take them. And I would have no. been 
took the jail to the acting any more crazier. Bro, I was fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, listen, this shit needs to be documented, and I'm gonna fucking, I'm yeah. gonna make sure it does. I need your name. Did I give you my permission? I, I need your name. I, I don't need your permission. Yes, I need your you name. I don't need. I, I, I don't know why I was kicked out for no reason. For no reason. Come to me and ask me questions. Sir, were you here for anything? I don't care about that. You were dead wrong. So I'm gonna pull you out of the store and say you can't shop here. Sorry. That's all you need. So next time I'll say, sh she's stealing. You're going to call the police on her? No, but this guy, he looks suspicious, right? That's what it is. A shocking act of hate in the workplace. Some state employees arriving to find derogatory notes on their desks this morning. CHP was called to investigate, and those workers were surprised to learn this wasn't a hate crime. CBS 13's Laura Hafley is live in West Sacramento with what happens next in this troubling investigation. Laura. Well, dozens of people come to work every day at the Office of State Publishing. It's a stressful job. The people who work here are in charge of handling and printing sensitive state documents. But it got a lot more stressful this morning for three workers who found racist notes at their desk. They start their morning at 6 a.m. I come in like I come in every other day. But it wasn't just any other day. There's a, a white an index card, like a, a five by seven index card, and it's faced, you know, written side down. He thought his supervisor left a note for him. And just flipped it over, and it said, "It, it do you want me to say what it said? Um, you it said, it said N-word lover. Uh, with an exclamation point in big bold, big bold letters, and I'm like, oh, you know, I mean, I was blown away. The CHP was called to the Office of State Publishing to investigate. They were like, straight up, there's nothing we can do about this. This wasn't a crime. Disappointed with their response, he took it a step further. Well, I asked him, what about the next time if it's worse? Like, hey, there wasn't any assault, there wasn't any battery. It's not a crime. Take this up with your HR. Mike Fletcher, a heavy truck driver, and CJ Brown, a warehouse worker at the Office of State Publishing, say they were upset to see the notes. It's ridiculous. It's disgusting, cowardly, and pathetic. But not surprised. Oh, you think the, the culture out here was tumultuous? You gotta go in there. Since 2016, it has been it has been red against blue, which shouldn't be because you know this is the workplace. But he did feel comfortable in his workplace until now. Are you afraid to go back inside those doors? I, I, right now, no, I don't feel comfortable going in there. The department that oversees the state publishing office says they have begun an internal investigation. And we did reach out to an attorney to ask why this is not considered a hate crime. He said it's likely because those racist notes were not coupled with something like assault or battery or stalking. We have reached out to CHP for additional information. We have not heard back. Arkansas Game and Fish investigating tonight after accusations that one of its officers shared a racist picture on Facebook. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Fox 16 News. I'm Kevin Kelly. I'm Donna Terrell. The Post is making the rounds on social media. Our Claire Kreitz spoke with those who are calling for this officer to be fired. It's disheartening and infuriating at the same time. Arkansas Game and Fish officer Jay Hagan now under fire, accused of reposting this picture on Facebook. It's beyond fathomable for me to... to comprehend how that should be normal or people should assume that's okay. Brad Betts says he saw the post, which he believes compares monkeys climbing on a car to African Americans protesting on top of a police car. How do you expect someone to respect you or even try to uh, even depend on you to help them 
If you're showing on Facebook that you're you're vine calling on monkeys. He says it's concerning to see a man in uniform standing behind a post like this. If it's so easy for you to do something like that, you should not have a job of authority, period. As the picture made its rounds on social media, it caught the attention of Arkansas Game and Fish. The commission released this statement saying it has come to our attention that an AGFC employee may have made an inappropriate comment on a social media posting. We are currently investigating the matter. This is not an isolated incident. Far from an isolated incident. For Betts, he's hopeful Arkansas Game and Fish is taking this seriously, but says ultimately this officer should lose his badge. It's time to quit just dealing with it and time to start figuring out how to get rid of it. Details are emerging from an internal investigation in the Scranton Police Department. Mayor Cognetti revealing two city police officers were terminated for alleged racist comments. Over the weekend, the documents were released on social media depicting those messages. Eyewitness News reporter Julie Dunphy live for us in Scranton tonight with more on this story. Julie. Nick Candace, good evening. The city has not released the names of those two officers yet, but they were a male and a female officer that were let go from the Scranton Police Department for making racist remarks. Now, they were discovered in August of 2019, those messages made in the years prior to that discovery. Racist. Those are the words Scranton's Mayor Paige Cognetti used to describe the communications between two former officers with the Scranton Police Department. It's alleged the officers used multiple racial slurs and messages with each other. My stomach churns just even thinking about it. Those officers, one man, one woman, have not been publicly identified. Both were terminated in June at the conclusion of an internal investigation. Over the weekend, a plaintiff in a civil lawsuit against the city unrelated to the internal investigation shared information publicly on social media. The documents that were put onto social media, that the, the plaintiff put onto social media, uh, were something that we had to give to his attorneys during discovery in August. Eyewitness News asked Mayor Cognetti why the initial termination of the two officers was not made transparent to the public from the start of the investigation. Personnel issues are something that we don't come out here and, and declare. Um, when, we, when we terminate people, we don't go make big statements about how we terminated people. Scranton's interim police chief, Leonard Nemetka, says his department has zero tolerance for racist behavior. The Scranton Police Department does not condone the, the acts of the people that were investigated. All right, we are not a racist organization. We will not tolerate any comments, anything derogatory against any individual. Uh, that's not our practice, that's not our procedures, and if it is found out, it will be investigated and uh, to the fullest. Now, Eyewitness News is pushing for the names of those two officers to be released. Coming up at 6 o'clock on Eyewitness News, we'll talk about how the city is pushing to end racial biases within the community. Controversy on the peninsula. A school board president is stepping down after his wife posted racially charged comments about Kamala Harris. NBC Bay Area's Ginelli has more from Menlo Park. A letter of resignation from Los Lomitas Elementary School District Board President John Venverlo. The reason? Racially charged comments his wife Meredith Venverlo made on social media about Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. The Twitter account has been taken down, but people have shared and criticized the posts, including one that says all she needs to be qualified is a black expletive. No brains needed. In Menlo Park tonight. Unfortunate. I think it's awful. Dismay about the posts. In his statement, Venverlo says his wife expressed reprehensible views he does not agree with, and he is stepping down immediately to avoid being a distraction for the district. Reaction to his decision is mixed. I think it would have been fine if he had stayed, but um, again, it's just... There's so many things going on in the school district right now. They really just need to be super focused on getting kids back and making sure teachers are safe. And He's not really responsible for what she said, but usually birds of a feather flock together. 
Meredith Van Verlo issued an apology statement blaming a medical condition she says affected her judgment, but going on to say there is no excuse for what I wrote, but I ask for your understanding that my state of mind was far from normal last night. Jean Ellie, NBC Bay Area News. Uh, late tonight, we should add the school board sent us this statement saying in part, we collectively and individually found the social media comments posted by John's wife to be abhorrent and the racially based and gender based hatred contained in the post does not reflect the values of our school district or our community. The arrest of an Arizona man for making racist comments is unconstitutional and charges should be thrown out according to top constitutional law scholars. Paul Eng was arrested by Scottsdale police about two weeks ago on October 23rd. He was seen in this viral video telling two black men this is a no end zone. One of the men placed the video on social media. The Scottsdale police saw the video on Instagram and went to Eng's house and arrested him. Um, we're going to take you down. We're going to arrest you, okay? Um, oh, you're kidding for, me. For, yep. So for what? Take this. Uh, for what? You're being charged with disorderly conduct. This, oh, you gotta be kidding. Can you Under a public records request, we obtained the body cam footage and police report. The report confirms Eng was charged with disorderly conduct for making derogatory and racist statements that could lead to violence. However, the report does not mention any actual violence by Eng. That's a problem, civil liberties experts say, because you can't legally be arrested for racist comments or fighting words in the United States. This has been confirmed by numerous Supreme Court decisions over the past 50 years. The arrest would not withstand a First Amendment challenge. And any prosecutor who knows the law should throw out the charges, said one law professor. First of all, you know, my, my constitutional rights to free, for, for, to free speech are being trampled on because, hey, I said something, he said something, and so, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to go to jail over this? A spokesperson for the city confirmed the charges but refused to comment further. I look at this as a total farce because it is. Eng's former employer fired him and reported him to the Arizona State Real Estate Board. We reached out to the agency for comment. It didn't respond. Gonzaga Black Student Union members didn't expect during their weekly Zoom meeting. On Sunday, they were met by people making racist and homophobic slurs. The university is now investigating. Two members of the group spoke to Caitlin Knapp about what happened during that meeting. It's Malcolm, can you shut up, you dumb black entitled this is what members of Gonzaga's Black Student Union heard on Sunday. Nearly 10 people yelling hateful words. It essentially was about a minute long of just this torrent of like racial slurs, homophobic comments, um, pornography on their screens. Jasmine, the group's activities coordinator, was in the open meeting. She said before the hateful words, one person threatened to kill Joe Biden. It just seemed to be like a catalyst and all of them just joined in to essentially start yelling um, racial epithets. Jasmine said she was shocked. RJ McGee, the group's secretary, said he's become desensitized to these slurs. I've been called the N-word before. You know, I, I've dealt with stuff like that before. I was more concerned about other students. Yeah. The Zoom host rushed to kick the people out, but the damage to their safe haven was already done. Right now, things like BSU, it's a necessity. That's the only place these black students feel safe, and I, and I think that shouldn't be the case. The university was made aware of what happened and are investigating. The university has told us that they stand in solidarity with us, which we appreciate, but what we're really asking them to do is do an investigation, a thorough investigation, a prompt one, and find out the identity of these people. They released a statement and said they're going to, quote, exhaust every available option to identify those responsible for this heinous act. If those responsible are identified as members of our GU community, the consequences will be severe. Jasmine and McGee said if the people responsible are students, they want them expelled. The university needs to send the message to not only them, but anyone that shares their beliefs that hate and racism is not tolerated under any circumstances. I spoke to the Spokane Police Department today. They told me that they did take a police report. They said that they're waiting for more information and evidence from Gonzaga University. Then they'll look at the law to see if what happened is considered a hate crime or any other crime. Nobody! Take your shit and get the fuck out of my seat! Kick the n bitch off the plane! Sir, please stop. You need to stop. There are children. Please stop. Stop! Hey, that's not necessary. 
Take your stuff and get it out of my seat, please. We will take care of it, Thank you. but I need you to stop yelling. She gave me in the stomach. Why are you in my face? I'm asking you to stop yelling. Have I committed any type of violence since I've been on the plane? You're no. Yelling and so you're what? Yes, sir. That's she gave me in the stomach. I don't no. care what she did. You're being Thank disrespectful. Thank you. Tell me to get Shut this on camera. Shut the fuck up for two seconds. I want a lawsuit. I want a fucking lawsuit right now, motherfucker. <laughs> Call the fucking police right now. I know you saw it. She beat me in the stomach. We're going to contact them. Thank you. You need to... Here, this is up? my seat. Can you stand up? Where is 25A? Where is 25A? Why did she just knee me in the stomach? <laughs> because you deserve it. Yes, she did. Because you deserve it. Did you get that on camera? You deserve it. You deserve it. Excuse me, I'm part West African. You deserve it. I can say it. Anytime I want. Why? You need me in the stomach. I want to press charge. Nobody. Take your shit. Is that only white man for the plane though? Is that only white man for the plane? What the fuck are you guys What? You say all they want? Yes I can! Yes I can. Clearly, I just did! Loser! I don't understand what people. Clearly, you have no fucking authority! This is all a 